The next three elements of design we're going to discuss are line, form, or form and shape, and unity or harmony. Okay? So let's talk about line. Now, lines define the boundaries of objects, and yet they're not really found in nature very often. The lines can vary in width and length, they can be straight, they can curve. Uh, they can actually disappear and let your eye continue on that imaginary line. Now, lines also help us to define things like planes. If you look up in wherever you are, if you're indoors right now, you can see a wall that comes up and it will intersect with your ceiling. Those are two planes and where those two planes meet, there is a line. This is a, a lithograph print by Toulouse-Lautrec. Now, Toulouse-Lautrec was a post-impressionist. These were done right around the turn of the century. Um, these were posters that were made for the theater uh, industry there in Paris. These would be very similar to what we have today as movie posters. But when you look at this, this is a chorus line, and they've got their names here. These are all very well-known dancers and actresses. And so you can see how the line is defined with the edge of their skirts. You can also see how their comp compositionally, there's a line of people here and then directional movement here. So it's, you can also see some of the design elements past just the line. Keith Herring was an artist from New York. He started off as a subway chalk artist, uh, would draw things down the subway. He became very well known. Uh, they were having gallery shows and things, unfortunately died fairly young. But when you look at these, these are all just lines that uh, create boundaries around his objects. And so you see all these different figures in here, and that's one of the things that he was known for. Now this is a different use of line. This is Jackson Pollock, and he was known for doing paintings that are referred to sometimes as drip paintings, but there's still a lot of compositional elements in here. There's lines that draw you in and out. Now this is a work by Pablo Picasso, and this is called Guernica. And this was his reaction to the, um, an, an event that happened during the Spanish Civil War where uh, Nazi Germany loaned planes and, and pilots to uh, Spain to bomb a city. And so they, they bombed the city, killed people, civilians, everything. And the Nazis were using it basically just as a training ground for their pilots. And so it was considered a, pretty much a massacre. So this was how he felt and, uh, about it, and this is the uh, image that he created. What you'll notice is a lot of lines that define the edges of the shapes. And it's actually a, a very large work, too. The next element of design we're going to talk about is form. Now, form is more than just shape. It has to do with lines that curve and connect and when put together create form in a two-dimensional area or in a three-dimensional area. Now this is a work by an African artist uh, who also uh, lives in England these days and her name is Magdalene Odundo. When you look at the forms, you know, she makes all of her pots by hand. You can see the nice curves or continuous curves. What you're looking for is not to have a curve that starts and then stops to a flat area, then continues. Once the curve starts, it should be continuous and it either increases in energy as it becomes tighter or releases energy as it becomes flatter. This is a work by Hans Koper. It's basically uh, a pedestal with a, a, this flat plate here with this vessel on top. Once again, you know, all of his forms are very smooth and they all link together. 
This was a work by Henry Moore. Now, Henry Moore was a sculptor from England, and this is a large piece carved out of wood, but you can see how the form just you know, moves along. There's no really hard changes of direction, and so it has a unity to it. Now, this is a work by Umberto Puccini, and he was a futurist. So they were trying to show movement in objects, whether it was a painting or a sculpture. And so here, it's supposed to be a person that's moving very rapidly in space. Now, these are works by an architect by the name of Frank Gehry. And this is a museum in Spain. But as you look at it, you can see how these curves interlink and everything flows from one form into another. He's done a lot of work in the States also. This is the Disney Center, uh, the Walt Disney Concert Hall in LA. But you can see how some of these look like scrolls that are coming around and ending up. Very beautiful works. Another very important element of design is unity or harmony. Unity means that the pieces fit together. You know, it's not like two different compositions on one uh, surface, one canvas, or something like that. And so it's very, very important that there be something that connects all the parts together. When we look at this piece, this is called a pro uh, this was a protractor series by Frank Stella. And so, you know, it's a series of repeating curves. And then the colors are all also very much in harmony. There's nothing that jumps out and tells you that it shouldn't be there. This is a work by Frida Kahlo. Now she was from Mexico and she had a lot of infirmities. Uh, she, her back was broken when she was uh, quite young. Uh, spent a lot of time in bed and things like that. So her favorite subject to paint turned out to be herself. And so I think about this as far as harmony and unity. Here it is, a portrait of a person, and yet with what you see with the thorns as uh, maybe a necklace, the hummingbird, that ties everything in from the background onto her person. Butterflies are in her hair. And so a very strong image that is unified throughout. This is a work by Gustav Klimt. He was Austrian. Um, it's a pathway through a, kind of a, a farm scene. And these are hollyhocks that are on the side. Because he's painted everything kind of muted, everything looks pretty much the same. So as far as unity, it's very united. This is a Utah artist by the name of Royden Card. And so he loves to paint what he sees out in uh, the deserts of Utah, Nevada, Arizona. And so even though the colors are very different, there's a unity to them. And also the, the form repeats itself as you see these different bluffs of sandstone. This is a work by a Russian artist by the name of Vasily Kandinsky. And so it's a repeated object. Now it's not a real object, it's a repeated design. And so as you see this, there is a unity in it because you see repetition that happens over and over again. 